Make your day richer than it was before. Got some good times knocking upon your front door. It's the Richard Wilmore Show. Judy, who is our newest member, I believe, at Hearts Need Art, because we started a great new writing program that you are you piloted really, and you kind of came up with the the concept for here. You've been with us since July, mm -hmm. which is so exciting for us. Um, what? How did you find out about Hearts Need Art? Well, it's really kind of a weird story in that. <laughs> I thought, because I don't have grandkids, I thought I would hold little babies, you know, and I was about to sign up with uh, Baptist Hospital to do that. And one of the authors who I've been working with uh, is a ukulele teacher here for Hearts Need Art, and she gave my name, referred me to, I think you, mm -hmm. to Richard, and then I was contacted to come and, and then talk with them. and. The rest is history. The rest is say. history. What, yeah. what drew you to something like Arts Need Art? I just like the overall um, idea of giving, um, serving the cancer patients. You, you just not having been in that situation, it's hard for me to envision what they're going through, and yet. Now that I'm in it, I'm thinking, wow, there's so much more to do, and these people really have so much to say. Mm -hmm. Just writing through their journey, writing through their pain, their frustration, their their anger. Um, I hear it from the patients, and it's it's been a been a joy yeah. to really get in there with them and help them figure out maybe not why they're feeling that way, but figure out how to get it on paper. It was, themselves. it was something that we've been talking about doing for a while, and, but we didn't know any authors. We didn't know anybody who could actually do that. And we were like, well, at some point, I'm sure we'll meet someone. And you kind of just fell in our yeah. lap, and it, it's worked out perfectly. And we didn't have a clue how the, we've seen it in other, in other arts and health um, settings. We've seen the mm -hmm. writing, but we've never done it before. So this is mm -hmm. brand new for us. And so, and you kind of have done it, though, in other, I have. I've helped people uh, write through grief, uh, the loss of a loved one, that sort of thing. I do mentor people writing their memoirs, and sometimes memoir writing is not all happy times that you remember. So I have helped people write through those struggles in life. We all have our own struggles in life, but it's very important to get it out on paper. It, even if you get it on paper and then throw it away, mm -hmm. you can do that too. Sometimes just the releasing yes. of writing it down and yes. never giving it to a single person. Yes. Yeah. So. so did you have kind of something in your mind of how you thought this would go? And has that changed at all? Because I know we, we yeah. were sort of tweaking it from day one on, yeah. on, on how we were going to do this. We thought at first um, that it would be a, maybe an, an hour of class and then two hours of bedside writing, an hour or two of bedside writing. So we tried the class, I did it for two weeks. The first week I had two ladies come who, and we talked about writing about a very important person in your life. We talked about the five senses. What does that person look like? What does he smell like? Or he or she, you know, mm -hmm. is he a smoker? You know, you, there's distinct mm -hmm. smells to people. Mm -hmm. uh, or a heavy perfume or whatever. Some are better than others. Yes, yes, that's right. Um, you know, what's the sound of the voice? Is it soft or is it a harsh voice or whatever? And I sat and wrote too at the same time. 
So we, the three of us, the two ladies and myself, we all wrote about our husbands, not knowing we were each writing about our husbands. But we wrote about our husbands and then we were able to read to each other. They wanted to read and so they, we read to each other. The next week only one of those ladies came back, so it was just she and I. Um, but then I realized as I was doing bedside writing that maybe people would really be, it would, my time would be better served if it was more of an intimate setting. Mm -hmm. And if I were at the bedside and writing what that individual wants to write about at that time. They may not want to write about their favorite person that day. Right. They may want to write about their uncle who they loved, you know, or whatever. Or maybe just about their anger or the frustration of what happened that day. Mm -hmm. So um, so we've gotten away from the classes. We're not doing the classes anymore, just doing the bedside. I'm able to get around and see probably 40, 45 people in the three hours and actually write with, sometimes it varies. Sometimes it's four or five people. Today it was one person. Mm -hmm. But that one person, it was a meaningful time of writing. Yeah, and we've already expanded your time slot mm -hmm. an hour mm -hmm. um, because the demand of people what, what you don't understand sometimes is like you go in and we have almost 60 beds um, but not all 60 of those people want anything we're doing or want are in shape to do anything right. that day mm -hmm. so we're a very quality over quantity is mm -hmm. what I keep telling people so you spent most of your time with one person and that's successful because right. that person was right. able to express what they wanted to express. Actually, I had stopped in and um, talked with him a little bit, and then a doctor came in right, you know, when I was there. So I excused myself, and he said, "Be sure to come back." And so I went to all the other rooms and then went back there. And he said, "Oh, I've been waiting for you. I was afraid that you wouldn't get back to me today." Aww. And that was the writing that we did. I wrote. Uh, a letter for him to his nephew who's in prison. So I wanted to so. talk about that too, of, of the different things that, that you have been writing with people, mm -hmm. because it isn't mm -hmm. just necessarily like write about your anger, or write no, about your time, no, or your not at all. Like what are what are you writing with people? Okay, so of course today was a nephew who's in prison. Um, last week I wrote with a grandfather whose uh, four grandchildren were starting the first day of school, Aww. and he he had to get notes of encouragement out to his grandchildren. So we talked about each of their personalities. What does little Johnny, you know, what What do you think? Is Johnny going to get in trouble? Or what, you know, is he, does he have that little mischievous glint in his eye? And he said, oh yes. He said, you hit it on the nail. <laughs> so we wrote a special note to Johnny and a special note to Priscilla and all about um, that kind of related to what they were doing. Priscilla's taking swim lessons and you know I want to come see one of your swim meets and I want to do this and I'm going when I get out of here I'm going to come do that you know. Um, so it was fun writing those four cards. So I just scribbled down I think I'm going to start taking my recorder okay. but um, I scribbled down notes and then I went uh, came to this room and wrote them out in the neatest handwriting that I could come up with. Um, and then another lady has lots of different experiences. She grew up on the south side of town and um, she was bullied when she was young. She couldn't speak uh, Spanish in school when she was young. Uh, and so she, and she was bullied like that. And so we just started writing some things about that. And I gave her a journal and she uh, she's not here today, but I'll check back, you know, in the future, because they come back in and out. Mm -hmm. um, one man cries every time he sees me now. <laughs> I've been here, I've seen him three weeks, and he has an awesome story to tell about his father. His father was, is, was just everything to him. I started writing little snippets of his story that he wanted down, and he, in the after the first week, he talked with his three sisters, and they all agreed that they wanted me to write his story. <laughs> but um, we're taking a little bit of time. I've talked with his wife and showed her what to do in his journal. So he's got several pages written, several little 
snippets of life mm -hmm. with his father. Uh, another young man, I think he's about 20, 21 years old, and when I talked, he said, no, I'm not interested in writing, and I said, who's your favorite person? Who do you love the most? And he said, my uncle. And I said, tell me about your uncle. And I said, let's write about your uncle. And because I just felt from him that he wanted to, and yet it was like, uh, me right, you know. Mm -hmm. He just talked, and I wrote, and we started talking about what he looked like. And I said, okay, what did your uncle, you know? Oh, he looked like the Mexican Mafia. <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> I said, really? What was his voice like? Oh, gruff and all, but he, you know, he was so funny. And he's, and so anyway, it, it just, I think writing about what the person, individual, wants to write about brings a little, brings more happiness in their lives. They forget about what they're going through for the time being. They can think about the happier things of life. So um, I try to, and sometimes they do want to write about their journey. But a lot of times when they write about their journey, it's not about the pain. It's not about the treatments. It's more about the people. Mm -hmm. They write about their caregivers. Mm -hmm. um, and the people are so good. And the, uh, you know, they come in and check on me and they give me words of encouragement and things like that. Why do you think it's important for people to write like that about what, about negative or positive things? Mm -hmm. Like, why is that important? Well, again, it's just getting it out on paper and getting it out. And I think sometimes when you get it on paper, it really doesn't look that bad. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when we worry about or we stress over the bad things of life, this is just me. I think when you stress over the bad things of life and you concentrate on those, uh, you fail to see the wonderful things of life. Um, that's like when I wrote my memoir, my brother said, there's nothing wrong in your life here. What, you know, this is, everything was happy. You don't, have don't you remember you the bad, yeah. yeah, don't you remember the bad times? And I said, no, mm. I choose not to. There, to me, I had a wonderful childhood, you know, and it's not that I deny that I really can't remember the bad things, you know. I'm trying to think, okay, what bad things did you remember? Because I don't remember any of them, you know. Write your own book. Yeah. Yeah. My high school years, I would never write about that, you know. But my childhood, yes. I love my childhood. It was just a wonderful time. But, so yeah. It's it. Yeah, it's what you choose to remember. That's right. Because there's a lot of stuff that happens. We oh, can't yeah. remember all of it. Yeah. Where do you see this program going with Heart Speed Art? Oh, my Where goodness. You... I keep, uh, I'm sure you and Sandy are getting tired of me saying, I need more help. <laughs> I need more help. <laughs> no, that's a good sign for us. Yeah, we need thing. more We're people trying. because I'm just not giving, like you say, you want the quality. Mm -hmm. I feel as I'm not giving the quality, because I'm thinking all the time in my mind, I've got to get the 10 more people today, you know? And I really need to calm down and say, okay, okay, if Richard and Sandy are okay with me seeing five and doing quality writing today, then we're good. But I do feel that there are some people being left out, and um, my desire is to get to all of them every day. Yeah. But everyone would be left out if you weren't here. So. Yeah, that's true. That's you know, true. I think so, yeah. it's such a different program for us than kind of mm -hmm. the normal art that we've right. been doing. So I'm so excited for this. Yeah. How long have you been an author? I wrote my first book in 2013. Pardon me? <clears throat> uh, well, no. I wrote it for 20 years. I published it in 2013. <laughs> <clears throat> um, and that was the memoir of my childhood days. It's a cross between Green Acres and Little House on the Prairie. Uh -huh. um, and then my next two I published in 2017. One was um, my son's true story of how to hitchhike from, from Texas to California in three days and 14 mm -hmm. easy steps. And which was not comical at the time, but it end up, ended up being a comical little book. Did you know he was doing that when he was yes, doing that? Yes, yes. He left at 9 o'clock at night on a Friday night and said, I gotta go. Yeah. I said, okay. What year was this? Um, 
He was probably 19, so 10 years ago. What's yeah. the title of that book? I want to read How to Hitchhike from oh. Texas to California in three minutes. days in 14 easy steps. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, and he had several policemen help him oh. along the way. So <laughs> it was very interesting. Wow. And then my third book was uh, Panning for Gold in Our Golden Years, a journal for positive aging. And it takes little uh, stories, vignettes of my mother and how she approached each step of the aging process with a positive attitude. The loss of her husband, the loss of her farm, the loss of, you know, freedom of doing whatever she wanted to, moving in with my sister, and every step of the way, giving up her car keys and like that. So, um, and some of them were very comical. Uh, the loss of her hearing, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so, uh, that was a fun book to write and this month I should come out with a uh, very simple self-publishing, my self-publishing organizer, which is a glossary in layman's terms on um, all the different things you need to know for self-publishing your book. Uh, how do people find your, your books? Um, well, I'm on Amazon, of I'm, course. Of course. Um, I have my website, judywaters.com. Uh, or can email me at sheermemoirs uh, at gmail. Um, I also I teach a lot of writing classes throughout the area, free writing classes. Um, free. Free. Free, free. Free. I'm part of the uh, writing mentors who um, do writing classes of all different freelance writing, how to make money with your writing, how to self-publish, how to write a memoir, how to start the basics of a novel. Um, Lots of different classes that we offer. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, one last question: What? How has working with Hearts New York changed you as a person? Mm. How has it changed me? That's been an experience in just the two months I've been here. It really has. Um, I think Stancy's personal story of how she started the organization really spoke to me. Um, our daughter had a carcinoid tumor when she, the summer she turned 21, and that was real scary at the time. Um, they thought it had leached out through her lungs mm -hmm. and all, but um, we were very, very thankful that, um, that she was fine, you know, had, the, had an operation, lost a lot of her lung, but um, she's a surgeon today, so, mm -hmm. you know, uh, she, to, and stands, I think that willpower that Emily had to, I'm thinking of all the, the exercises she had to do to get that lung expanded again, mm -hmm. the breathing, actually painful. And I think what Stanzi must have gone through at a very young age as she went through her cancer or through her leukemia. Um, it's, uh, it's just a willpower to keep on keeping on. And the idea of seeing these people here every Monday the struggles they're going through, and yet, you know, they're keeping on. Mm -hmm. They're keeping. I have not met one yet who has said, "I'm done. I'm done with this." Um, I just keep on going. Well, we're not done with you either. Oh, good. So good. you're going. I'm glad. <laughs> okay, good. Two thanks. You're welcome. That's it. That's your 20 minutes. Yay! How quick that was. That was quick. All right, great. Thank you. Uh huh.